All righty, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my Q4 2020 favorites, which means my favorite books that I read in October, November, and December of 2020. As always, I'll do this as like a top 10 list, and then soon after this video, there's gonna be my top 40 books of the year, uh, in which I bring together all of my favorites and sh share my favorite reads. So uh, we'll, get, we'll get started with the December ones. So starting in inverse order, in at number 10, we have Aesop's Fables by Aesop. This was a lot of fun to read. Obviously, I know quite a lot of the fables just from like popular culture and stuff, but it was great to go back to the source. There was a very amusing one that I actually can't remember uh, the title of now, but it was one of those books where I read probably 30 fables a night and took a lot of them away with me into like my day-to-day -day life and just, you know, applied them to that. So I was really impressed with it and would definitely recommend it. It was the complete Aesop's fables and it wasn't too big at all. It was like 280 fables. And again, it's a perfect bedtime book where you read a bit one night and then a bit more the next night and so on and so forth. At number nine, we have Ryan Holiday and Stephen Hanselman, Lives of the Stoics. This is the book that formed the backbone of the video on Stoicism that I did with Susie for our Lord Literature and Madam Media channel, so I'll link to that below. I'll also link below to any reviews that I did of these books as I think I did review quite a few of them. And I did do a dedicated review of this one as well. It's basically a historical look at some of the real life figures behind the Stoicism movement, uh, all the way back to Zeno, people like Marcus Aurelius. The idea behind Stoicism is that we kind of need to focus on ourselves. The only thing we can really control are our own thoughts and actions. So rather than worry about how other people perceive us, that's something we can't control. So um, why don't we focus on what we can control? And it's a very useful philosophy. Uh, it's very useful philosophy to have at this time of like the, you know the world's evolution when we're in the middle of a global pandemic. In at number eight, we have Switch Bitch by Roald Dahl. These are four short stories. They were originally published in a Playboy magazine, of all places, and they are very like adult humor. Uh, a few of them are about, uh, I can't remember his name now, but like this great uncle who's like notorious womanizer and uh, all this stuff. Um, yeah, interesting little stories just to see a different side of Roald Dahl, but they were also fairly well written as well for what they were. Um, and just a little bit a little bit of history as well. Like, can you imagine Roald Dahl being published in Playboy? That's great. Then we have The Outsider by Albert Camus. So this is a sort of short novella, I guess, by Camus. Uh, it contains like a lot of his philosophical thoughts in it. And um, it does have a storyline, but it's a very slow storyline, even though it kind of sounds exciting from the blurb because it's, um, you know, to do with death and murder and all this stuff. But... It is very slow, very philosophical, but if uh, you like to read the kind of books that make you think about things and look at the world in a, new, in a new way, then I definitely recommend checking it out. Then we have It Came From Ohio by R.L. Stein. So R.L. Stein is the creator of the Goosebumps books and the Fear Street books. And It Came From Ohio is essentially his autobiography. It was written around about the time of the Goosebumps movie starring Jack Black, um, but that, that, that kind of works well because it gives you like an overview of his old career. Uh, I didn't know that Fear Street came before Goosebumps, for example. Talks a lot about his writing practices, even like look, talks about his uh, youth, how he got into writing as a kid. He used to make these magazines and he shares like the front covers of some of these magazines and some of the stories that he wrote for them and that sort of stuff. Probably not one you're going to want to read unless you are interested in R.L. Stein or if you're a writer, but um, definitely I, I thought it was really cool. All right, then we have The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus. So this moves from fiction before to non-fiction. And basically this investigates absurdism, which is pretty much the idea that there's no meaning to life. We're all here totally as a result of random chances. Uh, and so then The Myth of Sisyphus kind of looks into how we can come to terms with that. Sisyphus was uh, an ancient Greek like story with a guy who was forced to roll a boulder up a hill every day and then you know the, the next day would have to do it again and again and um, Camus kind of compares that to our modern day you know go to work go to work come home go to sleep go back to work come home go to sleep and he looks at ways we can find meaning now one of the ways he says we can find meaning is to commit suicide but uh, there are other ways as well you can find meaning in art, which is what I like to think I do. Overall, really interesting read with, uh, again, some great deep philosophy behind it. We have Creative Blindness by Dave Trott. Uh, he also has a book called Creative Mischief, and it was a toss up between the two of them, which one to include here. He has a very uh, unique writing style, but um, 
yeah, he's a, an advertising guy and he writes about creativity, but he kind of draws from a lot of different inspiration. So one of the stories he told was uh, he worked with somebody who was trying to read The Exorcist on the commute and uh, he was so terrified by The Exorcist that he couldn't finish it and he took it uh, over to Brighton Pier and threw it into the sea. So Dave Trott, knowing this, went to the bookshop, bought an exact same copy of The Exorcist, ran it under the tap and then left it under his desk for him to find. So there's a lot of just stories like that uh, and the idea is you can read them and feel a bit inspired and find some new ways to be creative in your own lives. Then we have A Master of Reality by John Darnell. So John Darnell is the lead singer of The Mountain Goats. Master of Reality is part of a series of books that were created that are kind of inspired by albums and it actually reflects the format of a vinyl really well because there's like part one and part two, like the two sides of a vinyl. And it follows this kid who's kind of been locked up in a like young offenders institution um, and he w all he wants to do is listen to his Black Sabbath tapes but they won't let him have his Walkman and uh, in his classes they're making him keep this like journal so the first part is like him writing these journal entries about how much he misses his Black Sabbath CDs and then the second part is him as an older man kind of coming back to reflect upon it and what Darnell did really well is you actually feel as though the guy has matured from then to now like it feels like two different people or the same person 10 years apart writing which is really impressive so uh, yeah I enjoyed it then we have the Institute by Stephen King basically this is a story about like psychic kids kids with these mad psychic powers uh, they're all being kind of gathered together by this government funded institution where they're not allowed to leave and uh, it's Stephen King back at his best I think there's a lot of tension throughout every page it gave me vibes of Firestarter and like took me back again to King in his heyday really and it just shows I think to a lot of the doubters who think that he's not as good these days I think books like Firestarter and 112263 they're just like what, what are you talking about mate what are you talking about so yeah the institute and my top book of the quarter was Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. So this is like a literary fiction slash mystery novel, I guess. Got themes of like animal rights in it. It was written in Polish, translated into English. I actually read this as like a buddy read with Charles Heathcote, although we didn't really discuss it. We both just happened to be reading it at the same time. It was also an early birthday present from Susie, my other half. So uh, it only just made it into this year's reading. And uh, I'm glad it did because... I was like 50 pages into that bad boy and was like, this could be the best book I've read this year. And uh, you're going to have to wait and see whether uh, that transpires to be true. So it's my top book of the quarter. But as I say, I'll have uh, another video coming soon, which will be my top books of the year, my top 40 books. And uh, you will have to see whether Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead makes it to the number one spot. So there we have it, those are my top 10 books of the quarter from October to December 2020. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.